What's going on, everybody? This is Sean. We're with Days of the Dead in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I am with Ted Ramey. How are you doing today, man? Fine, thanks. Awesome. So, uh, being that you were on Ash vs. Evil Dead and how they were, you know, stars wanted to cancel it and not, and not want to do it anymore, and I, I thought it would be a, you know a, a, a neat type of question to ask because being so close to Bruce Campbell and how he, when he retired Ash, you know, of course all the fans freaked out about it. Um, you know, I would like to get, you know, your rendition as far as when Bruce decided to say, hey, I'm throwing in the towel for Ash. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I respect his wishes. You know, nothing lasts forever. It's kind of like how when Robert England retired Freddie and Doug Bradley did Pinhead. Um, but what's your rendition on that? Uh, good. Fans got, you know, we've got three movies. We've got uh, 15 hours of television, which is like 15 more Ash movies. There's not that much you can do with that character anymore. Right. That's really that's that simple. And I'm, I'm very happy for Bruce. I think, uh, you know, he's, a, he's, he's, he's created that um, iconic uh, character all, all by himself. And uh, uh, he really, um, you know, he really uh, he deserves to let that thing go. I think it's enough. I don't know what else you can do with that character except send him in outer space, you know, so. <laughs> exactly. Now, um, when you're on Xena, you know, obviously you're a, uh, a, a fan of comedy. Now, your character as, as Joker, how close is that to your actual real personality? You want to know how close it is to me? Um, well, it's, it's a little close, I guess. Um, all, all, all actors are playing a certain part of themselves whenever they're in front of the camera or on stage. That's normal. Um, um, but, uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm not like that at all, actually. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm not a very serious guy, but, um, um, I have no desire to tag along with two other people and, uh, you know, I'm more of a trailblazer kind of a guy myself. I don't, you know, not so much like jocks in that regard. And, uh, um, I, um, uh. You know, that's a, that's a, I don't fall very much. So, uh, but my interests don't lie so much in that sort of stuff. I, I prefer uh, writing and uh, directing and acting. So, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that uh, a lot of your roles you've done uh, a lot of like um, not main character parts, but more like type of cameo parts. Um, do you prefer doing those cameo parts, or would you prefer to actually do a a, a main role character? Well, I haven't done mostly cameo parts. I've done mostly normal parts. There are some smaller parts, but that's maybe about, I'd say, 40, 60 is probably the ratio. Um, but uh, uh, I like doing both. It just depends, you know, what it is. Um, it's, um, and, you know, of course, what it pays, because you gotta, you got to pay the rent. So it, <laughs> so it just depends, you know. Nice. And you've done so many films. You've done so many television. Now... I get a lot of different answers from actors when when we ask them about you know which do you prefer as far as doing TV and film because uh -huh. a, a lot of actors say with TV there's really no creativity behind it where with movies you can do a lot of improvision on it mm -hmm. um, is, is that how you feel about it as well no um, TV used to be like that many years ago but it isn't anymore TV has stretched for the most part, far beyond the boundaries of movies as far as being creative. Movies are mostly ten poles now, for the most part. They're, you know, Thor, Ragnarok, they're, uh, you know, Avengers, whatever we're on now, and um, which is fine movies, fun movies, but uh, those, those are creative in that the special effects are rather clever and good, and, and they're, they're well-directed and acted, but uh, there's very little improvisation on sets like that. Whereas on, say, uh, television now, especially streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, you find a lot more of that. So it's, I, I suppose as an actor, it would be more advantageous if you were a more creative kind of a guy to be on those shows rather than a movie, unless you're making an indie movie. Now, being that you're not on, obviously, Ash vs. Evil Dead anymore, um, what do you have in the works? Um, I just finished a new uh, TV series, uh, season one, but I can't tell you what it is. But uh, it should be out later this year. It's, uh, it's horror, I can tell you that. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Definitely look forward to it. Um, so when you guys first started out with you and your older brothers, um, 
what got you guys interested as far as getting into the filming? I know that they were older than you and, and they got into it. What made you decide to say, hey, you know, I want to be a part of that? Um, well, I, I started out not wanting to be an actor. I, t took, I had a bunch of really lousy jobs, uh, you know, during high school and shortly after I was really the worst jobs you could have. I was a dishwasher, bus boy, and a golf caddy. Like, basically, there aren't any other worst jobs except digging ditches, you know, for construction companies. So after that, I wanted to be, I didn't want to be an actor at first. I wanted to be a cop. So I took a year of pre-law. And uh, then I wanted to join. I didn't want to do that anymore. Then I decided to join the army to fly helicopters. I wanted to fly Apaches, but uh, my oh, vision wow. wasn't good enough, so I couldn't do that. And um, and then I I was working as a production assistant, which is another lousy job. I did that for a full summer, and uh, a friend of mine suggested that I audition, you know, for this industrial film. I didn't even know what that was at the time. And I started doing that. And the check that I got from that was worth three weeks of doing dishes, so I never washed another dish again. But um, uh, that's how I got started, really. It was just, and it was only into my mid-20s when I started to really love it. Before then, it was just a job that I, it's strange looking back, most people have it in their heart, and they don't want to do anything else. To me, it was just, I could make money doing it, and so I did it, and, um, but my interest, you know, lie more in things like uh, writing and, uh, you know, things like that. But I, but I love it now. Now, um, you were the possessed Henrietta, not only in Evil Dead 2, but in Ash vs. Evil Dead. Mm -hmm. How was it playing a possessed female? I mean, I know that we couldn't actually tell it was you because of all the makeup mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. But how, how, how strenuous of, of a part was that for you to play? Uh, it was challenging, uh, but uh, to play a different, you know, a woman or anything else, it's just a character uh, that you play. It's just because kind of I'm a character actor, so uh, I just took it from that point of view. And um, uh, it's, uh, like it was a little more challenging because you know it's a it's a woman you're trying to to uh, it's exaggerated of course because it's horror but um, uh, it's still I had to try to convince people that um, she she was a she. <laughs> Is this your first Days of the Dead convention? Uh, no, I think I've done two other Days of the Dead conventions. Um, one in Atlanta, Atlanta, I believe it was. Yes, and. Um, one other, I can't remember where, but um, Days of the Dead is awesome. Days of the Dead is awesome because I love this con. It's one of my favorites because it's true horror fans. There are no, you know, no one's coming in with Vulcan ears. No one's, you know, coming in with a little R2-D2 on a string in this con. Nobody. Um, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but this is not the place for that. And so people that come in are dissecting horror films. They love them. They love to be scared. They're... They don't shy away from them. You know, families come in, which fascinates me, too. They're little kids, or parents getting their kids into horror, oh, yeah. uh, which I think is uh, some people would, I think, consider a little twisted because some people say, oh, they're too young to see that. But the truth is um, the reason horror is most popular in America and most of the horror comes from America by far, even percentage-wise, of, you know, filmmakers to horror movies is because, I think, um, here we we sanitized death uh, a great deal in America compared to everywhere else in the world. When somebody dies in America, first of all, for the most part, they don't die in home, they die in hospitals, and then they go right to uh, the mortuary. Uh, if they need to, you know, um, they'll uh, inspect the body, foul play if that's necessary or if the, if the loved ones do, but then they're quickly buried. And uh, people don't, we don't really look at it, we don't talk about it, so we have a need to understand it and a need to feel those emotions of death and horror that comes with it. That's my personal opinion. It's not a fact. But um, so so um, I think when parents bring their kids in America to horror conventions, I think it's a really healthy thing. I don't think it's demented at all. I mean, if you're mixing up stuff like, I don't know, sadism and, you know, weird crap like that, then it's not, that's up to the parent. I can't make that decision. But uh, uh, I certainly, uh, you know, encourage it in children. They should know. You know, you sh it's important to understand that, you know, it's a part of life. And I think horror is so great because it, it gets into that in a fictional way and helps you to understand, you know, look, um, I think horror is just a one big rehearsal for the inevitable moment that none of us want. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. And it sort of you preps you for it. You go, oh, you feel just maybe a little better. You're like, yeah, I'm going to die. But, you know, that guy died really bad. Like, I might just, you know be hit by a bus as opposed to being having my head lopped off and then, you know, 
you know, whatever. You have my legs chopped off and then, I don't know, <laughs> somebody, you know, whatever. So when you're not doing films and you're not doing these conventions, which these conventions are awesome, as you said, because not yeah. only, you know, do you get to see all your fans yeah. and you get to see all your friends that you haven't seen in a while because mm -hmm. you're always working. Mm -hmm. But when you're not doing films, mm -hmm. um, do you have any like hobbies that, that you do as far as, you know, uh, I know when I spoke with like Andrew Devov, he's opening up a brewery and he was talking about that. Is there any stuff like that that you do? Um, I, I, yes, I have two, I have, I do have some hobbies. I, I, uh, I collect, um, I collect. I have a vintage uh, bone collection, and uh, it's very interesting. It's all legal, um, you know. I mean, I guess some of them are questionable, but it interests me. And um, anybody important? Also, no, 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 <laughs> important. Just interesting parts of bodies. It's fascinating. And then also, um, um, I I like to grow unusual and rare uh, herbs, um, not in the modern sense of the word it's not marijuana they're just <laughs> herbs from all around the world they like to grow so I have an herb garden that sort of fascinates me in my backyard and I tend, tend to that a great deal and um, um, yeah that, man, other things too but those are the two things that occupy my time when I'm not working all right, well, we're going to cut this interview short because uh, it's about time to get on the floor for Days of the Dead, and we just want to take a quick time out to talk to Mr. Ted Ramey here, which we do appreciate the time of him taking the time. Um, again, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And do you have any last words for your fans? Uh, yes, beware. <laughs> beware. Comb your hair. And beware. Be aware of Ted. <laughs> All right, everybody.